I'm Mr. Ward and today we're going to learn about spreadsheets. Open up LibreOffice and click on Spreadsheet. Across the top we have our columns. And top to bottom we have our rows. Information is held in cells. This cell is A1. This cell is B3. You can also have more than one sheet. Spreadsheets are great for collecting data. Let's start by making a list of names. List three of your friends. Use their first and last name. Hitting enter will move you to the next field. Now select the whole column by clicking on A. Let's sort these names alphabetically. Click on data, come down to sort, and sort by the name. You'll see that it now goes in alphabetical order. But what if we want to sort alphabetically by last name? We would have to put Smith into the next field, Jones into the next field. There's a simpler way to do this. Select the column, click on data, and come down to text to columns. In this case, we're going to separate into columns based on the space. Click OK. Now John, Mary, and Ray are all separated from their last names. Let's insert a new row. Right click on the first row and select insert rows. This first row will now act as a header row. Let's do some sorting. Select multiple columns. Click on A, hold down shift, and select the next column. Next click on data. Select sort and choose to sort by last name. Click OK. Now the names are sorted by last name, Jones, McMark, and Smith. But we can easily sort by first name. Or if we add their ages, we can also sort by that. Sometimes we need to put a border around a cell. To do this, select the cell or row of cells and click on the border drop-down. Each of these boxes represents what kind of border will appear. We can circle the whole field or just one side of it or just an underline, etc. Try different ones and see what you like best. To get a complete idea of what it will look like, Click on File and come to Page Preview. I find that a good idea for header rows is to lose the border and fill the background with a light gray. You might want to bold it as well. You can also resize columns by hovering on the small line separating them. Spreadsheets also include a number of math features. Let's start a new spreadsheet. Now we know that 2 times 4 is 8, but if we sum these columns, meaning we 
add all of the cells in this column, we should see that it comes to the same amount. Notice the blue box around the outside. This shows us what is going to be included in the sum. It's A1 through A4. Hit enter, and it calculates as 8, which is exactly what we would expect. 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 is 8. If we change any of these, it will update this cell. So now 2 plus 2 plus 5 plus 2 is 11. So 10 plus 2 plus 10 plus 2 is 24. You can also use negative values. So 10 minus 10 plus 10 plus 2 is 12. Select the column and hit delete. It will clear all the fields. Let's make a multiplication table. In B1, enter the number 1, and in A2, enter the number 1. In B2, type the following formula. Equals, this tells it that we're starting an equation. And we want to multiply B1 times A2. And certainly, 1 times 1 is 1. Let's add more columns and rows. Now that you have the first row done, Click and drag to select those cells. Copy them. Control C. Right click on the cell A2 and choose Paste Special. Now you want to select Transpose. Make sure this is checked. And then click OK. It'll give us a warning because we're pasting into a data cell that already has data in it. It's asking if we want to overwrite. Say yes. This rearranges the numbers from a horizontal to a vertical, so from row to column. Now let's see if our formula works. If we copy the formula to another row, well, it appears to work. An easy way to copy this formula to another row is to grab the little handle at the bottom right and drag it to cover the rows that you want to copy to. Hmm, that doesn't seem right. So what's happening is multiplying one by one. It's multiplying two by one. It's multiplying three by two to come up with six, and so on, all the way up. So let's take a look at our equation in B2. We want to multiply B1 times A2, but we need it to stay static to where it's using it. And we do that with a special character called the dollar sign. That looks right. And that does too. We can now copy this column all the way across. 10 times 10 equals 100. 1 times 1 is 1. 5 times 5 is 25. Everything appears to be in order. You can also add more columns. What the dollar sign does is establish the following character as a constant. 
So in this case, we're saying that 1 is to be used in here because it's staying at the top row. So we're going to stay with B1, but in the next column, we want to use C, but still stay in the first row. In D, we want to use D, but again, staying in the first row. As we move down our rows, we want to keep the fact that we're using the A column, so we set A as the constant, and 3 is going to change as we go down. So that way when we copy, the only thing changing is the second part. And of course, if you wanted to sum all these numbers, select the rows that you want to create sums for, and then add a sum. This one will sum the B column, this one will sum the C column, and so on may help to set this one off with a nice border. Let's try a top line. That looks pretty good. Finally, save this document as spreadsheet. Thanks for watching. I look forward to your comments. Please like and subscribe to help others find this video. Remember, we don't say I can't, we say I haven't. I'm Mr. Ward. Keep reading.